everybody, my name is Rogster, and welcome back to F1 Manager, where today we have the Azerbaijan Grand Prix and the Canadian Grand Prix. Now, as you already know, I've already played the Grand Prix in Baku, and to be quite frank with you, it could have gone so much better. We were in a really good position, and it just went downhill from there, so... Yeah, so you all caught up before we get into the Canadian Grand Prix. Connor, take it away. Right, so before this race began, we had to get new side pods in. And the one side pod would come in before the actual race. Uh, when setting the race targets, we thought we were qualified for Q2 and Q3. We didn't think we'd set the fastest lap. And obviously, we're trying to get a streak going. So in Q1, we knew we had to get through. At this point, our car is more than good enough to get through and after our first run throughs we were 10th and 14th but Madison as here. this last go in Q1 was happening there was a, a crash there. the Haas crashed into the side causing a yellow flag and causing Magnussen to be out of Q2 despite him qualifying but it also meant that we got through without our tyres actually depleting by that much. Our first run through didn't go so well, but our second run throughs were a little bit better. We were 9th and 14th uh, going into the final lap of Q2, knowing that everyone really was going to improve. So we we're waiting. We we're waiting for that opportunity to improve. Uh, despite us getting notifications about our fuel, which needs to get out of the game because that is well annoying. But Ricardo managed to improve. He managed to bump himself up. Obviously, he was guaranteed uh, to not finish 15th. And he ended up finishing 13th with Nice managing to get through to Q3, finishing in 10th. And 10th ended up being the theme for Norris in this qualifying session as Norris ended up on his first lap finishing in 10th in Q3 and also in his second lap in Q3 he finished in 10th. He didn't. He improved on his time but he didn't manage to improve enough to bump it himself up any further. When it comes to race strategies, Ricardo was on the softs to hards, the one-stop strategy whereas Norris was on the hards to mediums uh, with us thinking that the hards have worked for us in the past that will work for us again but they didn't necessarily work too well we managed to have uh, an overtake very early on in fairness through Norris uh, who managed to gain a place and Ricardo managed to gain places himself uh, and it ended up we ended up looking at this going yes we've got this this is going to be an incredible race for us both strategies are working really really well and we were hoping that ricardo would get ahead of norris at some point and give him drs and ricardo was doing exactly that ricardo was overtaking everybody in sight closing that gap to norris that we were hoping he could uh, get there and he did he did end up getting there Norris was 10th Ricardo was 11th we let Ricardo by hoping that it would work out for us but unfortunately we ended up doing it in a DRS zone when Joe had DRS which meant that we ended up losing two places with Norris rather than one them. yes we got to Ricardo look. to where We're we wanted him to Nicholas be but we didn't get Norris and a weird occurrence as the two Williamses crashed into each other, causing a virtual safety car. And with Norris struggling on those hard and tires early on in this race and now. losing ground, Cooper. we decided to pit him during the virtual safety car onto and medium tires, onto off. what everyone else was using, hoping to go medium mediums past this point and try and close that gap on everybody else, especially when everyone else ends up on the hard tires. That ended up being the aim, but... That didn't end up being the case as there was another crash this time with a Hassan, not the Williamses. And this one caused a safety car. Magnussen ended up being out of the race. It caused the safety car, so we pitted both drivers for the hards. And you're probably thinking Norris was already on the hards. Yes, he was. So he was going to have to conserve for the rest of this race. It ended up working out perfectly for Ricardo, as that was going to be Ricardo's pit stop for the entire race. 
Whereas with Norris, he was going to have to conserve on those tyres a little bit, but he could make it to the end of the race. But Ricardo got screwed by the Williams. He got screwed by Latifi, who decided to go right next to where Ricardo was overtaking, and it left it open for everyone else to overtake Ricardo. But Ricardo ended up managing to gain places, and so did Lando Norris, who managed to overtake two cars at the same time. And speaking of overtaking, there was more overtakes to come as Ricardo managed to overtake the Alpine and gain on on his position in the race. It ended up looking like this was going to be brilliant for us. Ricardo was in 10th, Norris was in 12th, but then we got the news. There was a gearbox issue for Ricardo. Right when we didn't want to, right when we need pace, that car, our car was going to lose pace in comparison to everyone else because of this gearbox issue, which was not great to see. And right in the, at the end of the race, right towards the last lap, Mick Schumacher on the softs. They, they pitted him again, hoping that he would be able to gain places on the softs. And he did. He gained so many places on the softs. He managed to nick that 10th spot off of us and cause heartbreak for not only us, not only McLaren, but for Danny Rick, who had been in 10th for the majority of the race and ended up losing it to Mick Schumacher, who was on the softs. It was a disappointing, disappointing time for us. And that... But we managed to actually build new underfloor uh, ready for the Canadian Grand Prix, which we could put on Norris's car to improve Norris's car even further. So we started that project off and we made sure to replace that gearbox in Ricardo's car so we have a chance. So in now this you race. all caught up and ready for the Canadian Grand Prix, given the fact that we got no points in Baku. We, we need some points here before Silverstone, before before the big one, really. And if we, if we go to our targets, the, the incentive is to reach uh, Q2. But quite frankly, with the cars that we got now, I think, I think we can make uh, Q3. Uh, I will have to update the cars. I'll make sure to do that in a minute. Uh, but we did lose our finish position streak uh, that we had going on. Again, I'm going to make it 10th and I'm going to make the target four races in a row. Just with one driver, confirm those changes because remember the potential reward for that is incredible and the loss isn't that great really. So we may as well go balls to the walls with it. Um, let me just go to my car and uh, cars and make sure that I've actually put all the upgrades on. All right, so it's the start of Q1 and practice went reasonably well, actually. Uh, so we're, we're in a good position where I think we got top 10 twice. So I'm hoping with Norris, we're gonna, uh, because he's got the better car, he's going to be able to obviously be fine and do well in this qualifying session. But absolutely, God knows, we should be fine in Q1. So I'm not too con... Ah, uh, cancel. Uh, I'm not too concerned, to be honest. Um, one thing I did not realise was our ERS system is poor. Um, ah, I forgot that our drivers were in trouble in terms of... I, we changed the gearbox, in fairness, for Ricardo. Uh, although his ERS system's very low as well. So we might change both of their ERS systems after after this qualifying session hope or before the race even one that works uh we're definitely changing it because it needs to be done oh it's gasly spanned out at turn six i think it is gasly that in the alpha like tauri does spin well it's not too bad it's not a bad spin uh, it, it's it's a I can get away with this spin is exactly what that is. Uh, Hamilton's been held up massively there. Obviously, Gasly must have been on his flying lap maybe on that one. We, we send it everyone out. So Ricardo's behind Russell. Norris is behind Sainz. So that's not too bad at all really. Um, so that that should really be a positive. All we want is them in greens. Latifi's at the front. The Aston Martins are at the front. So what we need right here right now is we need greens right so teams are starting to cross the line we need ricardo to put out a better time here if we don't need to refuel that's one of the most frustrating things on the game take that out um ricardo's going forward now he needs to better his time can he better his time 
I don't think he does. He barely betters his time. And he is in trouble. Uh, ignore there. R Ricardo's in a lot of trouble. Ricardo could go out in P1. I never thought I'd say that. Ricardo could go out in P1. Poor driving by Ricardo there. Poor driving by Norris, really, not to improve. Did Sonoda improve? Sonoda didn't improve. So, Ricardo, mate, you've gotten away with that big time. Right, so we're going to change the ERS system on both cars because both cars are struggling with their ERS system. So, we are going to adjust both of them uh, onto a different ERS system. So, they should be fine. Although... Norris's gearbox is far too low for me. Everything's fine on Ricardo's. What I might do is send out Norris for Q2, but before, if he gets into Q3, put him on a different gearbox. And in the race, definitely put him on a different gearbox. But that's something to keep in mind for definite. We look at Ricardo. 112 isn't good enough, really. Uh, 112.5, I think, is closer to being good enough, but I don't know if it is good enough. So Norris is possibly at the back norris is towards the back but behind perez ricardo is behind ghastly so if they get close enough maybe uh, they might be able to use slip streams but i don't really think so um but they're gonna start their fly laps there's been a crash that could be awful that could be awful because no one's going to improve on their times if there's been a crash. Ocon has crashed on turn one in qualifying. Holy Mary, mother of God. What happened here? What? That's one of the most pathetic crashes I have ever seen on this game. Uh, he might not actually get through, but he might have to retire uh, anyway. So that might, that will help Norris out. Whether it helps out, I don't think it's going to help out Ricardo because I don't think anyone's going to improve their times. I really don't. Like if you look at the map here, look, like everyone's really far ahead here, and everyone kind of went. A bit slow at the back here. So anyone really from, I think, Gasly onwards, I think he's going to struggle uh, to improve their times. Ricardo hasn't improved, so Ricardo's not really going to help. Is Norris going to improve is the question. I don't think he is. Not many other people are going to improve. He doesn't improve. So now it's looking at everyone else, but I think everyone else got held up. I think this has been brilliant for Norris because... This has guaranteed us into Q3. That Ocon crash has guaranteed us into Q3. Ricardo's in a decent position. But it's all about Norris. We are really pushing on Norris's car because we've given him everything he needs to get into Q3. And he's done exactly that. So we're going to reconfigure because I don't want to be on the fresh softs at the start of this qualifying session. And let's send out Norris. Not on the fresh softs. Let's send him out. And uh, see what happens right at the start of this. 112.5 is kind of what I was expecting. And remember, that wasn't on fresh softs either. So I I'm really happy with that. I don't know where he's going to be. He's going to be behind signs. So that's fine by me. Uh, but we are currently above Alonso. Whether that stays the same, God knows. But we are currently above Alonso, which is perfect. Because if we can end up finishing higher than 10th, like we have always get to Q3 every now and again and then get 10th. If we can get above that and really start in a good position, that would be great. I know we finished in 9th before in Q3, but I think we can take advantage of it this time uh, if we do do that in the actual race because of the upgrades this car's had. How is he going to do? He must improve. He does improve and by a monstrous amount. Holy hell, Norris. It's, he's just drove his absolute arse off there. That is the best qualifying we have ever had. We finished above a Mercedes in qualifying. That's incredible stuff. Starting off in SIP is damn right incredible. Well done, Lando Norris. That is how you do it. Wow. Wow. Right, so going into this race, we are going with two very different strategies. With Ricardo, we are starting off on the softs, go into the hards and go into the mediums. Uh, it's a very similar strategy, actually, to going mediums, hard, softs. Uh, which could be a strategy, but the only reason why I'm going with the softs first is to really just make up places, make up places, and then he can kind of defend them. Um, and quite frankly, another reason 
is it's very similar to the Lando Norris strategy, which we are going mediums to hards. So we're going for one stop with Norris, but we are willing to switch to this two stop strategy, which is technically quicker. Um, like if there is some sort of safety car earlier than the than we're expecting, then we'll go to this sort of strategy and stay on the hards and then go to the softs right at the end. Um, but we're going to stick with this medium to hard. We're going to go for the one stop as if there's going to be no safety cars. But if there's safety cars, we are going to change with Norris. Whereas Ricardo is on this two stop strategy uh, and he's got to stay on it really for the majority of this race. They are going to race very different races for sure. And that's what makes this very exciting. And it's lights out and away we go. Right, here we go. We're going to stay here with Ricardo. We can't really see Norris. Usually we can see Norris in the distance, but he's over here somewhere. Um, I, I don't really know where... Where is he? What's going on with him? He's in SIP currently. We look behind him. He is safely in SIP, so that's fine. And Ricardo is trying to make moves. He is trying to make moves. He is currently 12th. He was 13th, remember. We started off 13th and SIP. Norris, though... Is trying to overtake Hamilton. And I think he did. Lando Norris is on an absolute mad one. What in the world is going on here? Lando Norris, you amazing, amazing man. What in the world? Why is he overtaking Hamilton? We are not faster than the Mercedes. And he's trying to go faster than the Mercedes. This is incredible stuff. Which is also perfect because if it, there is three DRS zones on this track. So, if he can end up in DRS range of the Red Bulls or the Ferraris, we could get carried to about a fifth place finish in this race, which would be incredible stuff. Ricardo's actually trying to take the Alpines. He might have taken Ocon there and put himself in a prime position. And he does take the Alpine. He's now got Alonso in sight. Could we possibly be getting double points with these two today? That would be an absolute gift from heaven, that would be. Ricardo's just taken somebody while I wasn't really paying attention. If you look at the strategies of everyone, everyone's on softs or mediums. So the majority are on mediums. Um... Including Norris. So Norris is medium. He's also got the fastest lap. What is Norris doing? Norris is on a bad one. I mean, the inevitable happened. Hamilton has eventually taken Norris. So as long as we stay in the range of Hamilton now, I'll be really happy. If we start losing pace now, that's what I'm going to start to worry. What we didn't want to happen has happened. Russell has taken Norris. But Russell, as you can see there, is on the soft tyres. So... Is it expected that R Russell should be ahead of us um, anyway? I mean, he's in a Mercedes, but he should be really ahead of us even more because he's on a softer tyre. So, again, as long as we stay in the DRS range of the Mercedes, we will be fine. We've just got to do that. <gasps> no! No! Daddy Rick! Daddy, it's, he crashed into me! He crashed into me! Did you see that? And that was a he crashed into me! And it may have really hurt their overall Damn boy, that's how... He's going to have to retire, isn't he? He's at the back of the grid! It's a collision. Of course it's a collision! He crashed into me! Alonso, he, uh, so Alonso's got a punishment, which is nice to see. Uh, that is completely screwed over Ricardo's race there. He's got minor wing damage now. Are you, I, I, minor da- What are we meant to do? Are we meant to keep him out? I don't know what to do. His tyres are fucked. Everything is fucked. I don't know what to do. I haven't got a clue. I haven't got a clue. What the fuck am I meant to do? I am fuming, by the way. I- I was it ready for a really nice race. I thought we were going to be fine. I thought everyone was going to be happy. But no. No, that doesn't happen. Only the front ring is practical to replace during a pit stop. As all of the cars, uh, car parts take too long to remove and install. Okay. So. The, so basically, we've got minor damage to things that we can't control. Oh, if we got minor damage to things that we can't control, 
We're not pitting the fucker. No, 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 no. We're not pitting the fucker. No. No, we're not. We're going we're going to run this to the ground and then we're gonna pit the fucker. How's Norris doing? Getting overtaken by Gasly is what he's doing. Honestly. That must be one of the worst laps I have ever had on F1 Manager. Easily. There is no point watching Ricardo because Ricardo's got damage to his car that we can't fix. So, it's a shame, but that's that's the situation now. So, we, we've just got to stay in this train with the Mercedes again. But the problem is, the only good thing is we, we should be guaranteed points. Guaranteed points as long as no one else crashes into us. For anyone that wants an update on Ricardo, we've pitted Ricardo finally. And he's currently in 19th. So, he's miles behind everybody because of this stupid bugger who decided to crash into me. Magnussen's locked up. He didn't crash into anybody though, did he? No, he didn't. Not, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. Oh, here we go. So, Gasly and Russell have now pitted for their hard. So, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Um, like, I mean, we're pushing ours to the end. And that's very, very touch and go. So, whether they can get theirs to last to the end and keep up their competitiveness, God knows. But, currently, we're keeping up with Hamilton and uh, keep it in this DRS range. The moment he pits is the moment that we're going to start um, thinking about um, pushing on these tyres. Uh, although we have just overtaken Hamilton. So I don't know what that's about, but we've overtaken him. Which is amazing to see. Daddy Rick's going up to 16. I mean, we're, we're going up in the world here. And we've got Williams's and Aston Martins to overtake. So maybe maybe it's not fully over yet for Daddy Rick. But it, it feels like it's over, doesn't it? But as I said, the moment that Hamilton and Bottas uh, pit is the moment I'm going to start pushing on these tyres hard. And we're going to try and build up as much momentum going into this into the pit as possible. We're, we're in a good position with Norris. I feel like that we still have places we can make up with Norris, which is good to see. Okay, so Verstappen and Sainz are starting to go into the pits now. So they're definitely going for the one-stop strategy, um, and so are we. Um, Bottas is in the pits, and Hamilton are in the pits. So this is our optimal pitted lap. So we're going to do exactly that. We're going to pit for the hards and we are going to attack. Norris is going to absolutely push, push, push for this one lap. Go for it. Absolutely go for it and see where we come out. Because at the moment, we're projected to come out 11th. So I want to come out 10th or above. That is that is my aim. Hamilton and Bottas came out in 9th and 10th. So we want to come out just, just behind that really. Uh, we we, we want to come out around that 9th or 10th mark and start that battle again between us, Hamilton and Bottas. That's the aim anyway. Whether it actually happens or not, we don't really know. Now the question is, where are we coming out? Remember, we pushed and we pushed hard at the end there. And we're coming out in 5th. It paid off and it paid off massively. We waited and we waited and we waited. Hamilton, miles behind. Gasly's even a bit behind. We are in the perfect place right now. We're in fifth. We've come out in such a good position. And it all paid off because we went for the overlap on them on the pit stops. They came in together and we were like, no, we're going to push for one lap and one lap alone. We managed to catch up with the leaders. And that it's paid off really, really well here. Really, really well. Oh, I'm so happy with that. So, so happy with that. Okay, so we've been caught up now by the Mercedes and everyone, really. Everyone's behind us, if I change camera angle. Uh, everyone's behind us. Uh, and we've got the two Mercedes in front of us. It's a, it's, it's a theme of today. I don't know how they managed to catch up so bloody quickly. But now we're in the DRS uh, like range of them all. We should be fine now. We should stay in this little gap because there's a massive gap now to 11. So we should be getting points. Just how many points we get 
is purely going to depend on what happens for the rest of this race, whether anyone spins, whether anyone doesn't. Remember, we we think we're going to struggle to make this last to the end of the race, these tyres. And there are people here with 80%. Like, Ocon is not going to make it to the end of this race on that tyre. Gasly shouldn't make it. Russell shouldn't make it. Hamilton will make it and Bottas will make it. But Russell, Gasly and Ocon should not make it, which... Means we should be at top seven. We should be getting top seven, but absolutely God knows whether whether that's going to happen or not. And remember, there's still a lot of this race left, over half the race left to be exact. And as we've seen before, a lot can happen in a short space of time. Looking at you, Alonso, I'm looking at you. Something worth noting is Bottas and Norris have broken DRS range. Gasly is holding up the Mercedes enough. And Norris and Bottas just keep trading places at this point in pretty much every DRS zone. They keep trading places, which is pulling them away from Gasly, Russell, and Hamilton, which could possibly mean that maybe even top six is now on the cards. And especially when Bottas is on a similar like length tire to me, Russell and Gasly might have to still pit. So this is going to be a really, really interesting end. I, I, I do wonder what's going to happen. Gasly spun. That is huge. Gasly has spun out. What, what's happened to Gasly? Gasly spun in the exact same position as where uh, of where uh, Sonoda, I think, spun in qualifying. I've got a decision to make here because Ricardo is not going to catch up now to that top 10. And with and with and the damage to the rearing and the Williams. suspension, do I maybe want to save our gearbox and the RS and just retire the bloke? It's tempting to just retire him because it is quite sad to watch at this point. Um, I, I could retire him. Do I retire him? Do I put him out with his misery? Because Ricardo's been lapped as well, and the safety cars and the lapping system. Uh, so we, we're not going to get the benefit of a safety car past this point. So maybe retiring Ricardo might be the best choice here, just to save his battery and stuff. Yeah! I've just retired Ricardo. That's, that can't be undone. I've just retired Ricardo. So, I mean... The ultimate decision there was the, the fact that he's got damage to his car and we really, we really can't afford, I don't think, to have him uh, get more damage to his car. Uh, especially, I thought the safety car might be able to help us, but the safety car really wasn't going to help us. I know that doesn't happen in F1. I know people don't just retire cars for the fun of it just to save a bit of battery, but that's what's happening. So... <laughs> Alonso is crashed. Alonso is having the worst race of his life. He, he crashed once into me, and now he's crashed again. This time, not into me, which was really nice to see. Because uh, you'll see, there goes Norris there. So, a little bit of concern when I saw the crash meter, and I saw that Alonso was involved. But we're all right. We're okay. Alonso has got his due caution, crashed again. That's why we retired Ricardo to stop that from happening to us. Um, but I think that's also increased the gap between Hamilton and Norris again, because Hamilton had to slow, whereas Norris did not. So, I think that's helped us out even more. So... May, I think Alonso maybe has helped us out and, like, at the very end of the race, has paid us back for everything that we've done up to this point. As there's currently a trade of 6th, 7th, 8th, and then 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. That's a very weird trade to see. But, fingers crossed, Norris can keep this going and we can secure 5th. Come on, Norris! So... Verstappen's on his last lap, which means we're on our penultimate lap. And, well, we're on our last lap now. So, I mean, we're going to absolutely push here. We've got DRS. And I don't know who we got DRS off. But we did get DRS off of somebody. And we're going to we're gonna push. We're going to push because Hamilton's miles behind. We're going to push on everything currently. Uh, and just get as far ahead as possible. Because Hamilton shouldn't be able to catch us. So... We're just going to push, 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 get fifth, and then we're going to have a whale of a time. We're going to have a party. We're going to have champagne bottles. We're going to have a buffet. We're going to get, we're going to like 
overspend and like get in trouble with the FIA over the cost cut because we're just going to spend so much money on buffets and champagne that we're not going to have any money for anything else. So that, that's basically how things are going to go. Um, but we, unless he crashes, we should be guaranteed fifth. Give us fifth. Give us fifth. Come on. Fifth is an unbelievable achievement. And unfortunately, I think Ricardo would have probably got some uh, would have got some points as well uh, if he didn't get crashed into by Alonso, but he did, so that doesn't help us. But here we go. Norris is about to cross the line and get us fifth in Canada. Holy Mary, Mother of God! We actually did it. Flag. We managed to get a yeah, buttload of points. Up. We finished above both of the Mercedes. We finished above both of the Alphines. And we finished above both of the Alfa Romeos. We, we have done so, so well in this race. And it, I've, our strategy worked. Our one-stop strategy worked. There was no safety cars. So there was no need to pit Norris again. It worked. And it worked to perfection. Woohoo! Woohoo! So there we have it. The summary of the race. We managed to secure ourselves 10 points by finishing in fifth. Ricardo, unfortunately, did retire. But he was voluntarily retired after Alonso annoyingly crashed into him. For the dr Drivers' Championships, that really helps Orlando Norris as he goes up to eighth now. He goes up Fernando Alonso. Screw you, Alonso. Um, and goes above uh, a lot of other people. But unfortunately, he doesn't quite go above the Bottas's, the Russells, or the Hamiltons. But in the Constructors, that 10 points puts us well ahead now of Alfa Romeo. Remember, our aim is to finish 5th or above. And currently, we are 13 points above 6th, 10 points above 5th. So, we, we are sitting comfortably in 4th. All we got to do is just continue to keep getting points like we have been so far this season. Right, so because we've got a lot of money, we're going to upgrade the factory um which would be perfect and then po uh, up possibly upgrade the wind tunnel as well uh i think we will i think we'll upgrade the wind tunnel so that that will really help us in the future um and yeah what we should be getting is uh, more time to develop the car uh before the british grand prix in the next episode we will have the british grand prix and the austrian Grand Prix. Obviously, I will play Silverstone in my own time and record it and show you what happens. And then we got the Austrian Grand Prix after that. Holy boy, what an episode that was. It was a very mixed one, to say the least. Uh, we bottled it in that first race in Baku, but we made up for it in Canada at the Canadian Grand Prix with Norris. Yes, Ricardo had to retire. He didn't really have to. But we made him retire. But it's going to all pay off in the long run. I'm pretty sure of it. If you have enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button. Do comment your thoughts down below of what you thought of the episode. And what you thought of the performances of our drivers today. And if you haven't done it so already, make sure to smash that like button. So you do not miss a thing. And I shall see all of you in the next video. See ya! Alonso might actually be on my hit list now. He's on my hit list.